All right, cool. What are you doing this time? Gary, are you familiar with uh, the different ways that insects communicate? I'm familiar with some of them. Yeah, you know, with pheromones, you got ants who leave trails behind them on the way to uh, on the way to food. Yeah, ants that talk to you. <laughs> yep. Now you get both kinds. <laughs> Shouldn't have left that donut on the floor. I know, buddy. Stop busting my balls. <laughs> yep. And just t- take your prize. <laughs> Don't be a sore winner. Claim your reward. <laughs> yeah, ant. Like you're fuck you're king shit of fuck mountain now. You get to eat the royal jelly and become the queen. Like I don't want to hear your bullshit about my uncleansliness. Yep. That you're benefiting from. Yeah. Asshole. <laughs> so why yeah. would you complain about it? why would you make me feel bad about this? Yeah. Yeah. It feels like at this point you're gaslighting me. <laughs> Aunt. Is this like a Joe's apartment kind of scenario? There's just one though. Okay. Just one. So like Joe's apartment was one of the secrets of Joe's apartment is like, (laughs) what a goddamn nightmare. (laughs) I don't think that movie was played for terror, but like, (laughs) that is what it is. Like, God, is there a Joe's apartment game? Uh, I haven't thought about Joe's apartment in quite a while, but like, what a scary, 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 scary TV show or movie. It was a a movie. It was MTV's first movie. There there were shorts about it though. Were they? Like, like, yeah, it was like liquid television or something. I gotcha. Um, I think is where they first, they they were based on, on, on shorts so I, I knew that there was something shorter <laughs> kind of uh came from that gotcha. good god that's <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to undo years of therapy no no it's, it's very terrifying yeah rockapella is the roach chorus what rockapella <laughs> what are you doing here we were just leaving <laughs> <laughs> no the other a short film that aired on mtv gotcha. in between commercial breaks gotcha so that's what i was thinking of Whew. Yeah, no, it's pretty upsetting regardless. But there are some bees that communicate by dance. Hmm. Yeah. So what I have here is a box that translates bee dances. Okay. Okay. You've been doing a lot with cubes and boxes lately. Yeah, I like you it. know, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah. boxes are good. I'm looking at a box huh. right now. Not just this one, but I've got a box of Kleenex right here. Hmm. That's, a, that, that's a box for my snot. Hmm. Oh, so somebody doesn't just use toilet paper. <laughs> paper towel somebody uses kleenex i gotta take care cool. of my openings okay cool yeah um <laughs> no but i'm not gonna put it at bees because that'd be too much what i've done instead is i have um created this montage video of different dance scenes uh that were used as technologically impressive uh, uh kind of uh demonstrations in any video game released from 2005 up through 2010 so we got uh, scenes uh, from Fortnite. yeah oh. we got i mean no like just like <laughs> Pre that. Yeah, like any yeah. any game where like you're you, you had to go to like a nightclub and people were dancing on the floors and it was yeah. a bunch of people in lights. So you think Vampire the Masquerade, think Heavy Rain, uh Hitman, you're in there too. Don't think you're getting away with this. Hitman, you're in there. You're in there. <laughs> Hitman, you're in. <laughs> They're in too. That's how you get his power. Yeah. <laughs> Guzzle it up. Yeah. That's not carrot 47 juice. Seven flavors. That's not carrot juice. That's king's piss. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but no, I'm just gonna point this box at this uh, montage of video game dancers and see what it's trying to say. Okay. Oh. In B language. In B language, and then I've got this other box here that translates B language into human language. Uh, yes, into <laughs> Well, no, it translates that into uh, into what is it? Uh, beta script seven. But then oh, okay. it, it'll it'll be it'll be translated to human. So it's a okay. series of boxes all connected together. Um, it's just saying B movie. I, I, I oh, okay. think the first box has an agenda, Gary. I don't know what um like which B movie. Like, um, is it going to be like Plan like Nine from Outer or? Space? Yeah, <laughs> Joe's apartment. Getting back there. No, no. It just it just says B like B E E. I just got it. Oh my god, Gary! I just got it. It is a good joke. You have to be fair. Yeah. about that and it is one of the best running jokes in this movie and they don't do it too many times <laughs> so we had to be fair to a b movie and b movie the game <sighs> they have an admirable sense of restraint <laughs> as far as saying b
My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. This is Abject Suffering. We're going to sting you. Also, too, on your oh, I'm, okay. <laughs> okay, no. We're going to sting you all right. I, I yeah. just, I feel like that's not going to stick, man. No, no. I, I didn't, I didn't know if it was going to be a, I just, see, I, I have no idea what your plan is. You just expressed a vague dissatisfaction and started <laughs> doing different stuff. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think, I think that a podcast to listen to on your Pano is pretty good for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, 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 we can get that. It's a podcast you can listen to on your honeybee yellow Pano. Mm-hmm. Yep. That was in a and premium a episode too, I think. So I think that, well, I think we're especially fucked by mentioning and, the Pono. And nobody oh. nobody else knows what, what Ponyo is either. So like <laughs> um that that Miyazaki movie about a bad MP3 player. <laughs> uh, like with the soundtrack of Discord and Neil Young chords. <laughs> Let's yeah. impeach the president. No, <laughs> Neil, go home. Go home, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> Actual song. I want to be with my cinnamon Obama. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but we're talking. We're talking about the meme move. What's that, Gary? Nothing. I was still just making Neil Young <laughs> like tenors. <laughs> No, uh, so this is a uh, a demand that was placed upon us by backer Xenolalia, saying it's the meme movie, but they made an open world game. Yeah, it's a, this is a good this is a good demand. I think I think so because I didn't know that there was a game of this, mm. and like it's not so bad as to be like unplayably bad. And I know very little about the B movie other than like the meme stuff. Right, right. So like I like I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you're playing this. you know what in life is just a con if you're not learning you're dying you know yeah yeah about the b movie right like not a lot about bees but like a lot about the b movie yeah um my favorite thing about the b movie meme is listening to seinfeld talk about make like talk about like how strange it is to mm -hmm. you know that, that it's there and then also like hemming and hawing and kind of like trying to create a will he won't he about uh whether or not there will be a b movie too mm, c movie <laughs> yeah um, that's just finding yeah. nemo come on yeah yeah I, I, yeah <laughs> yeah i don't um yeah b movie um this is we talked about this in the last episode like this the performances in this game are very very sleepy yes like Seinfeld does not seem like he's having very much fun. No, um, you know, and, and he ordinarily seems like he's having tons of fun. Oh my gosh, he's just so indignant. He just yeah, Seinfeld. He he wants to know what the deal is. Yeah, but you know, he wants that desire. Like, and in this, he feels like he has no desires. Right. You know, <laughs> no, he's no. without. Walk. Yeah, the, the the this phoned in is probably right. Like, I don't know that making a, a game of B movie is that was necessarily ever in his plan because i mean people know the story right like he was trying to make b movie for years and years and years specifically because he heard one fact about bees which is uh they can sting somebody but they can only do it once and they'll die yeah right which is an interesting thing about bees it is yeah it makes it, them like it, greek myths or something yeah it's yeah. like oh i just want to like i just want to make a an animated movie about bees where that is kind of the core where that is the core drama, right? Like, is he going to use the superpower uh, that he has at his own expense, right? I have no idea if it does. I've never seen B movie. Um, mm. However, it, <laughs> for as much as he is fixated, even in the game with just having characters read off little like uh, zoo books, fact cards about B biology, mm. um, <laughs> even though he is so concerned about communicating that the main character, Barry B Benson is a male, but he still has a stinger, and that is presented for him. And mm -hmm. he falls in love with a human woman. The human woman thing, I mean, we got to get to that, because that's very much the, the <laughs> elephant in the room when it comes to B-movie, I feel like. Yeah, and this uh, it is the thing that it shares in common with Sonic 2006. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and just kind of unsavory computer graphics yes. yeah. movies with animals in general. Like, computer graphics movies that are about animals hanging out together, great. The second they want like fall in love with a human mm. or like there's sexual tension with a human, it gets weird to me. Yes. Um, the uh, I just put together that bees have kind of a reverse heaven wish. Ooh. Like a bee stinger, their one time at inconveniencing somebody <laughs> and then dying is not that unlike dying and having your one time of having a wish granted. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah. So it is. It's like the sad, like tiny version of it. Yeah. 
you know i think it's weird how the bees in this movie just because of the shape of their body and like their little anthropomorphic seinfelds make them all look like they have huge fucking badonka donks <laughs> like it makes it look like Sein- seinfeld has like a clap ass like exceedingly much clap ass. <laughs> you know like <laughs> It's just really weird to think about regular Seinfeld, but with a big old chungo butt. <laughs> <laughs> just like going out in there and it's doing like... his routine. And then when a song comes on, turn around and clapping it, you know? <laughs> it's a very weird, different intro <laughs> to that show. <laughs> that last one was the butt. That was the butt. <laughs> Why are all these people walking around carrying uh, or d- dragging wheelbarrows behind them? Oh, that's where they keep the ass. Yeah, that's what this is the kind of asses that we have on offer when it comes to being a bee. <laughs> the, um, so, oh my God, uh, Gary, I'm just I just have the I, I just have the uh, the the Wikipedia for Bee Movie up. They mm-hmm. have Sting as a guest voice in the Bee Movie. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I hope. I, I mean, I can't imagine they'd have the restraint not to call attention to that joke. Right. Right. <laughs> Like that's kind of the 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 problem with this as a like the trailers and the the version of this I watched that sped up uh-huh. and the um the game and everything is like there's no real like the jokes have this weird where they just kind of like he says them and they lay kind of flat mm-hmm. most of the time and then other times he draws such attention to them like as to where you know there can be no mistaking that like hey we just said a joke yeah and it goes back and forth between those two modes where it's like the joke doesn't work. And nobody says anything, so that's really surreal. Or the joke doesn't work, and everyone says everything, and that's really surreal. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's never an appropriate amount of nudging, and it's never a joke that works. Like, there are no there are no funny jokes in this. It mm-hmm. should, you know, suffice it to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, I mean, so it is made for kids, so it is, it is shielding itself yes. with that lowered expectation, right? Did you, in like a million years, expect this to have carjacking? No, no, I didn't. Yeah, I, I, I don't also, think so. I like, didn't expect this to be, um, be. I didn't expect this to be a Grand Theft Auto clone. I didn't expect a Grand it to Theft be Auto a Grand Theft Auto clone with like lots more mini games. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I got bored with this super quickly. Where you're just like, oh, you go to work for the first day and you play this little game where you're, you know, it's like kaboom or whatever. Yeah. Where you're trying to catch these little pollen bits that are falling. And the second one, it's like, oh, you're doing crazy taxi. Incredibly slow, very janky, low stakes, um, crazy yeah. taxi. Um, and I was like, I'm, I'm done. It's pretty boring. Yeah. Like, and it's lots of talking mm-hmm. and no jokes or anything. It's like yeah, lots yeah. of setup about, again, like with the last episode, like it has to set up daily bee life and how... <laughs> miserable it is but they have to do it in real time like yeah. it's not enough to do a montage or whatever or mm-hmm. just tell us that barry b beeson is like not happy <laughs> right you now i'd believe it if you told me he wasn't happy mm-hmm. and you don't have to like show me this right right you know we're nearly you know show don't tell how how good would it be if they just took the basic gameplay of buck bumble and mm. then just added the b-movie license on top of it surprise there's not a hack for that <laughs> you know <laughs> that's not a thing we're just like <laughs> Or vice versa. Like, I would like to see the B-movie made with Buck Bumble as the lead. Mm, yeah. Because, like, the cyborg agent of chaos that is Buck Bumble <laughs> would have plans in, in for Renee world? Zellweger, but they wouldn't be <laughs> the same plans that Jerry Seinfeld has what, what you're What you're describing is basically the B-movie version of Terminator. Yeah, Like, man. Buck Bumble. <laughs> Bumble that's, just gotta the... be, that's gotta be C-movie. Like, <laughs> B- Barry v- versus Buck Bumble. <laughs> be amazing it'd be two minutes long buck bumble would destroy him i think absolutely like, buck bumble can fire tactical nukes <laughs> just like imagining then just like seinfeld spending days in the studio with doing death throw overdubs <laughs> you know just like ow oh, no no dearie like <laughs> you don't understand like your leg has been ripped off by by a cyborg bee like, yeah it's yeah. not you know you can't sound mildly inconvenienced yeah we need you to we need to sound like you're in the most pain you've ever been in your life <laughs> ah no, 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 Jerry. More than that, you know. Mm, mm. Ah! <laughs> oh, Jerry. Yeah. Oh, Jerry. No. But yeah, like so, it is present, presented as an open world. You're just kind of like again for those first two days. No, no, I didn't quit this because I was bored. I quit this because my emulator crashed. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I got. I got bored. I quit <laughs> Yeah, we, we we probably got about to about to the same spot, but like I got to the crazy taxi stuff. Yeah, yeah, and that was that 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 was that was it for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, but like I didn't see any combat. Like if you if you weren't headed towards your waypoint, you could like stop and get honeycombs or whatever. 
Yeah, I, I got a couple of those, but yeah. nothing really happened. Yeah, there are, there is combat. There is a lot of, but it's a lot of just varied mini games. Mm. Like yeah. watching the long play of it, which is five almost, it's six hours long, five minutes and fifty, uh, five hours and fifty minutes, mm -hmm. and you skip to you know hour four minute forty, and you're doing an overhead like organizing parts of a machine to fix an engine Blech. thing. There are parts of this that are like Mr. Mosquito. Yeah. Where you have to like sting people or like go bother people in specific places. Um, it's just, it's very, very, there are obstacle courses, like really weird. You have to, do, you have to fly through the rain, dodging raindrops, Ooh. which is like quite pretty difficult. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I guess that would be a concern for a bee, but right. also like there's lots of rain, um, you know, very weird Yeah. and very varied, but just everything is in slow motion yeah. and there's no jokes. <laughs> I, I did come out of this feeling like a little bit, like I wanted to watch the bee movie. <laughs> Like not desperately, like not enough to rent it. Okay. <laughs> but I was like, I wonder if like just the how fucking weird this is would work for me a little bit now. Yeah. In a way it wouldn't as young. Just like, oh yeah, like he does like hit on Renee Zell Zellweger. Right. Like that's weird. Yeah. Where does you that know? go? <laughs> yeah. And where does that exactly? Where does where does he put it? Right. You know, well, like, no, well, I mean, like I was just talking like, about like in the arc of the story. I wasn't yeah. talking about like physically where he puts it. Talking about J Jerry Seinfeld's uh, presumably human-sized dong attached to the bee. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a wire town thing with the dick pigeons. Yeah, they yeah. own no birds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he can't achieve lift off. <laughs> yeah, like that's that, that, that inspirational quote at the beginning. <laughs> it's like scientifically bees cannot fly, and yet they do so anyway. And there's like an asterisk, <laughs> and they go to the asterisk and explain that the real reason they can't fly is because they have human-sized dongs, and not like you know we're not talking about like John Holmes size human dongs. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. Like purely average, or maybe a little bit below average, but right. still, you know, I mean, human size. I mean, di like di disabling for them. <laughs> yeah. You know, did you see that? Um, they the world's biggest bee that was thought to be extinct. They found it. What? And oh, we God. Big bee again. <laughs> I'm never leaving the house again. Please. Big B is back, baby. <laughs> um, like, it's about the size, like its body part. So not all the flanges and wings and stuff. Okay. Is the size of an adult man's thumb. No. So imagine the meaty section being like your entire thumb, like long like that too. Oh. That's the B. And then there's a stinger and legs and wings that come off of it. All right. It's a pretty big boy. Do you, do you know the number for Meals on Wheels? <laughs> yeah uh, no <laughs> so i'm not gonna i'm not leaving anymore yeah okay i don't know if you could just sport get meals on wheels like do you think you could just get meals on wheels because of b problems and not because of elderliness that conversation they're gonna throw me in jail for asking <laughs> no <laughs> i guess that's true yeah but like <laughs> if i can't leave the house yeah. because the b might be out there yeah because they found big b <laughs> um the, I don't um, care if he's in Madagascar. He can get here. We have planes they, now. Yeah. <laughs> they do fly. Yeah. And like, and that one's probably got a thundercock. Oh, yeah. You know, like Big B probably does have like a horse size member. Yeah. Yeah. No. You know? Isn't, when you read about the uh, Wikipedia for B movie, didn't you find it interesting that it kind of presages the B crisis that we're Do facing in real life? Does it? Yeah. Like it ends up being about all the bees like going on strike because... Like the story is Barry B. Benson finds out that humans take like the entire work. It's kind of like dozers. Like it takes the entire work of their labor mm -hmm. and just eat it and sell it and make money off it. And he's oh, like, that wow. sucks. Yeah. And he kind of becomes a little revolutionary. Huh. Um, and the bees stop pollinating and stuff. And it's like, this causes a crisis. <laughs> and then they have to go like pollinate because otherwise, like, you know, we lose plants without it, bees. Is, is this the, is this the prequel to the road? It's, <laughs> it's like, a, it's like a, the prequel to, reality <laughs> yeah i know just that that's one of the things you know that, i guess again. reality is a prequel to the road <laughs> right yeah right today <laughs> every every yeah. day you wake up uh, and it's a prequel to the road no that's one of the things like one of the biological catastrophes oh, gotcha. the road is, is <laughs> related yep yeah it's just, it's just that they're just you know because of like colony collapse and stuff just a horrible defoliation death spiral Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the B movie presaged it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, <laughs> that, pretty strange. That has to have been like a concern for humanity before a B movie. I don't think that. I don't think that Jerry Seinfeld just like weirdly got it Invented right the first it. time. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be. I mean, I don't think he did either. But I don't think that at the time this was made, we were quite in the situation where people were aware about it. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. I hear about bees all the fucking time now, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone's talking bees. Mm-hmm.
local lo- local honeys. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. No. <laughs> Another weird like so like looking at the looking at the thing for um uh, sorry looking at the Wikipedia article for B movie just looking at this and thinking man like. All these actors, look at the cast at this. Yeah. It's like, so Jerry Seinfeld, how much like personal capital did you burn? Like yep. getting John Goodman and Chris Rock and Kathy Bates into this. Like yeah, there are no, some people they're, like. Their one condition was get uh, Cosmo to say the N word. <laughs> like, we'll yeah, okay. do your movie. But we need Michael Richards to go down. Yeah, Richards is going Jerry's down. Jerry's like, I can make that up. And then, <laughs> yeah. He convinced him. Yeah. Well, that might have been, I think that might have been the first celebrity meltdown that I ever watched happen in real time. It's weird that they include it in full in the game. <laughs> it's like three <laughs> credits. <laughs> it's like, you know, just, it, it's, uh, it, the, the, the game opens, right? And it's got right. the production credits. You got Beanox, yeah. you yep. got Activision, and then it is just a cell phone video of a comedy <laughs> club, interior dark. <laughs> interior <laughs> dark, subject matter dark. Yeah, it's such a matter. Such a matter. Here's a uh, TV's Kramer. <laughs> it's not going well for him. No, no. Having yeah. a good time. And and don't and don't think, hey, hey, Activision, don't think that I didn't notice you got a studio called Beanox to develop this. Yeah, uh, yeah. You guys are having a real, real. It just sounds exhausting to live in this culture. <laughs> like everyone going to be you and everyone making these be. Yeah. If like, you got straight bees, like everyone saying it, like. For the benefit of the audience, but if you live there, it'd be like, oh god, give it up. Yeah. They're, they're, um, this, this is entire. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to no, move on from this. The star studded of this of this is absolutely bonkers. Yeah. Like I'm looking at the the voice cast here, and there is more than 20 names, all of which you have heard of. Yes. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey is in this. Oh, guess yep. what? Michael Richards is here as Bud yep. Bud Ditchwater. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's, where, that's where he does the monologue. Yep. Larry King is here. Larry Miller is here. Yep. Ray Liotta. Yeah. Um, Tess McNeil. Um, John Goodman. <laughs> John Goodman. Uh, you know, all kinds of people. Yeah. Larry Miller. Rip Torn. Yep. Rip Torn is as Lou Duca and <laughs> Pollen Jocks. The general of the Pollen Jocks. Um, yeah. yeah. It, okay. it's, it's kind of gobsmacking. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it, it's a whole lot. It's also um, on the Metacritic for this. Uh huh. We don't ever read Metacritic reviews. No. But there's a paragraph long one that I think is worth reading here because it's very confusing. Um, done in 2016, so it's right in the meme section. Okay. You know, so this for, is for the game Metacritic. or the movie? For the game. Okay. Um, best game ever, no doubt. Day. Love game. B, get G, and it's so good because it's B movie game. For starts, it's. Movie B Mo, <laughs> so that I could make to B movie merch. I have so much get movie stug, so good. <laughs> and then a bunch of letters, and then B game, no got no good by NOA. And that's that's what we got. Zero users found that helpful. Was that dictated through like a like a drive through? That's what speaker? it seems like to me. Like yeah. it definitely seems like Alexa take a dictation about the B movie game. But I love get movie stug. So <laughs> get get movie stug. Eat up, Martha. Get movie stug. So good. The um, uh, surprisingly like good reviews for this game. Like this huh. game is not hated, and I think for being a kids game, like if you have to introduce your kid to Grand Theft Autos, right? Like th- this is probably not the worst way to do it. But I mean, like if I was if I was eight years old and I won a Grand Theft Auto and my mom got me this, like I would mm. I would throw acid at her. Yeah, you two facer. Uh, yeah, no, just absolutely. <laughs> like, just to, you know, you're gonna like what kind of Flanders ass situation are you in where this would suffice? <laughs> what kind of rods and or dogs <laughs> would, would would be down with this? I don't know. I could see myself at eight being okay with this. Yeah, <laughs> like just you know, okay, like you know, I'm gonna go do a bunch of B shit. Yeah, yeah, you know, that this is my life now. Like it's cool. <laughs> it's... I, I don't know. I could see it. Um, yeah. you know, but maybe like I, you know, but no older than that. Yeah, yeah. At a certain point, like it would be pretty intolerable. Yes, um, the flying sections look pretty fun, actually. Oh yeah, uh, in kind of a space area way. Hmm. And and I I didn't never got to those, but yeah. watching video of them, it look, looks kind of fun. I've had a hankering to play like a dog fighting game for a while now. Hmm. It's been a while since I've done one of those. Yeah, I gotta play some Wing Commander. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
with those cat people. <laughs> on the uh, on the we message board, we got somebody who I think may be quoting. This is two years ago, so absolutely, this is in, again in the in the meme pocket. We got yeah. uh, Zamphius. Uh, the title is "These are winter boots," and the subject or the uh, the the the, t- the text is just "You like jazz?" Yeah, because that's, that's the thing that he says to Renee Zellweger when he's uh, hitting on her. Oh, okay. Like, what if the answer is yes? What if the answer is no? What are you going to do? <laughs> B. Yeah. You know, not um, a good face question, B. <laughs> annoy, uh, so in the Wii version, uh, again, in the re- one of the reviews by Horror Spooky, we have another sin of amateur review writing that I absolutely hate, which is opening opening with an appeal to your previous review record. Oh, uh, so, sure. <laughs> so the title. I'm sure everyone knows that you're experienced. <laughs> yes. Um, so worse than an actual bee sting. Only three Wii games that I have reviewed so far have gotten a score less than an 8 out of 10. And all of those games received a 7. Some people may think I'm biased for the Wii. And that any Wii game that is released is automatically going to get a good score from me. Well, the thing is, I hadn't played a bad Wii game until B-Movie, which is a game that is just as intelligent as the title sounds. It's actually a pretty good joke. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, the title's not so that's not the problem with this friend. <laughs> right, but he gave it a four. Uh, I, the, um... I, I give this city my lowest score yet, a six. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And then we got Wolverine fan on the Xbox 360 version, uh, who is primarily upset uh, at this game because he thought it would be easy achievements, but it wasn't. Weird. This is a, definitely a time capsule kind of thing, <laughs> even if it's only a few years ago. Yep. Like, I got to get these Wii achievements. It's like a real, <laughs> a real 2015, 2014 problem. This was written in 2007. Oh, 2000. Yeah. yeah. Like earlier than that. I, the, uh, the review that I said was from 2016. That's right. Oh, I mixed yeah. up. Yep. Um, there are a lot of bad Wii games. Oh yeah, reviewer. Like, <laughs> Wait I like minute. the Wii, but like, boy, it's got a lot of bullshit on it. So, Ooh, re- it's a a real bad uh, uh hit to miss ratio. Yeah, like one yeah. of the worst actually. Yeah, <clears throat> like it, and people there's there are think pieces about that. How like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, people give the the Wii too much shit for shovelware stuff, and it's like, well. D- I mean, kind of like yeah. the, the Wii and the GBA had tons of that stuff, but you just saw it everywhere. Like part of it is just the placement of that. It yeah. matters, you know, how often you see it. Uh huh. Like people are giving it shit. So, hey, hey, Gary. So I wanted, I wanted to see, you know, go, go, go and look at horror spookies, uh, track record. Um, there's something horrifying here and I need to open up a spreadsheet so I can quantify how scary it is. Okay. One moment. Uh, you, you you can you can navigate there if you so choose. Um, all right, how many reviews over and under do you think? Uh, do you think horror spooky is written? Well, I do have it open now. I mean, it, it'll it'll <laughs> even be it'll even be really it, it'll be hard to quantify so even just by looking at. <laughs> Gary, I like, need a number. I need a number so I can tell you you're under. Um, uh, I'm my my guess is 250. <laughs> oh, Gary! Oh no! Um, uh, so the, the, there are a couple of these that are just system headers. But let's okay. say in a walk, 1,130. <laughs> oh. oh, that's a, that's that's a whole lot. That's a lot. And geez, horror spooky. I'm ra- I'm rounding down because I just I did a crude copy and paste. No, this is just no, it a... shows on the right how many there are. Oh, okay. Well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty pretty bonkers. There's one thousand one hundred and twelve. <laughs> that is that's quite a quite a few. Um, some of these, yeah, like you know, quite a few facts and stuff too. But this review section, this is this is a lot. <laughs> And they're not like they're not bad enough to be like entertaining. Like this could have kept the show going for decades if right. this guy was grammatical king level. Like this would have demanded a spinoff. Well, well yeah, but we we can't ask that much. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't handle this real mean review of oh it's the reboot of B. Okay. I was like man, fuck off, dude. <laughs> like you don't get to say that you know B movie is shitty and then call Thief that, but it's the reboot. Looking oh so um, so the, the the we fell to greater depths after uh after this. Uh, he's got like the new play control Mario Power Tennis that got a three, yeah. No, so he he, he, he eventually he found some more Wii bad games. <laughs> right, right. The one thing about this guy is lots of pretty bad um, titles, like pretty generic titles. Yes. Not in a funny way, but just like I want this guy to work harder. Like the Resident Evil Seven review is called "Enter the World of Survival Horror." 
Yeah. And I'm like, you know, what is is this like a, a weird <laughs> listicle from like official PlayStation Magazine 2001? <laughs> You know, kind of thing like uh, lo- looking at this i mean and i didn't do like a control find literally just my eyes rested upon this winter sports the ultimate challenge for the wii the 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 review title is just generic review tagline yeah he's he's going for volume <laughs> like he's he's there's, there's this is intentionally over a thousand like he's going for the gamer world book of records or something <laughs> you know Maybe I don't know. I yeah, I've got I've got no idea. This but, is a lot. But he's not like going for you know, if going for quantity just that makes you think, all right, he probably does a couple of paragraphs and gets out of there. Like these are no, long no. reviews. These are very long. Yeah. His review of Resident Evil 5 is uh the title is Evil Gets Eviler. But he gave it four and a half stars, which is quite a lot for Resident Evil 5. Yeah, that's pretty high. Like I'm a half hard defender of that game and I don't think I would give it nine out of ten. No, no. In, in, um, any anything above a three on this, uh, or uh, like you know, three out of five would be uh, would be inv- would be very generous little, for that little game. suspect on that yeah. game. Um, yeah, this is rough stuff, man. This is crazy. I would not have guessed this. Yeah, <laughs> Peggle is plinko on acid. <laughs> cool. Oh, okay. Good. 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 Cool. <laughs> Are you sure it's not from hell? One through yeah, steroids. Um, what do you do? You want yeah. crack in there? It's at. It's free with all the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a lot, man. I would not have guessed more than a thousand reviews from this guy. <laughs> Quite spooky indeed. <laughs> um, the the review for PT, which I gave four stars. Which, mm, um, <laughs> is it a game? Is it a demo? The answer is yes. Oh, his ma- his signature is: if Fortnite is still relevant by this time next year, I will post a vid of me eating a bowl of alphabet cereal covered in mustard. And this was a a. a uh, a statement by somebody named Geo. Okay. And he has it dated for 621-2018. So right. I am Fortnite, opening up my yeah, calendar. calendar. Yep. Let's <laughs> just check. We got to check and see if June 21st, a little after D Day, uh, <laughs> 2019, if Fortnite is still cop- uh, popular, see what Horace Spooky does. <laughs> okay. Wait, no, is it, is it, okay. So it's Geo. He's, quote, he's holding someone accountable. Okay. It's check like, of Geo. Eight yeah. mustard bits. 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 Yeah. Uh, or if Horse Spooky changes his signature now that the pact, now that the geese has been fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> like, extremely spooky. Oh, good like, God. Like, you get to make, like, here, here's a, here's the dark bargain. Like, what is the earliest review this guy's done? As far as time. Let me see. Um... um Oh, I can, I can just. How long he's been doing this? Yay! I'm, I'm really happy that I, that, that I copied all of this into a spreadsheet because I can tell you his the first. The earliest re- date I see is 2011. Oh no. 2009. There's one in 2009. More, more than that, his first review was for time, a Time Splitters game, Time Splitters Future Perfect, uh, in uh, 2005. 2005. So 15 years. This yes. guy has been doing this. A thousand reviews. So each year. You know, like, what would be the, what is the dark bargain? If this guy got to set this geese on someone, <laughs> would you take that if you had to write reviews at this rate? No. Like 15 years, you have to do a thousand of them, more than a thousand. No. But you would get to make people like hold themselves to dark bargains about cereal and shit. No, I don't care. I don't care if somebody, <laughs> I don't care if somebody is a hypocrite. But <laughs> if there's one eats alphabets covered with mustard. No. <laughs> yeah, it'd be pretty, uh, I guess I wouldn't take that. I would need to have more power than that. <laughs> i just so i mean 15 15- I, I have the power to make someone give me a living wage <laughs> and then perhaps i put in this much dumbass work into bullshit <laughs> right like, see that's i mean that's just yeah. called having a job yeah um, man i just I, I i, I kind of want to now that i have just an ordered list of this guy's of this guy's shit like i don't know i'm 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 looking at his first review 15 years ago and i'm looking mm-hmm. at his most recent review for monument valley and I, I mean, it looks the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How has he changed? Oh, How wait, no. He... Oh, he revised his review. Oh. Oh, and it's okay. So, wait, he's gone back to it. So, um, Oh, Free Radical is the title. I've written over 1,000 reviews for GameFAQs, and I am the website's most pro- prolific review contributor. 
It all started back in 2005 when I decided uh, to write a review for Time Splitters Future Perfect, a game that I had played through with my friend and co op and rather enjoyed. However, I was very immature and inexperienced at the time, and I think I rated it too highly. So I decided to revisit Time Splitters hmm. and offer an updated opinion on the game. Um, and and he <laughs> and he provides um, his original review, uh, which has which it, it has changed. It's full of like exclamation marks and stuff. Hmm. So. At least there's growth. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if he is to be believed, he is the most prolific. He is king shit of fuck mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Seems, uh, seems like it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, anywho, uh, thanks Xenolalia. Yeah. <laughs> for suggesting this. We appreciate it. You never know where um, it's going to go. If you want to suggest or dictate games, you can do so by becoming a patron. You mm-hmm. go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Um, $5 a month gives you extra episodes. More than that gives you more than that. Yep. And uh, ratings, reviews. Yeah. Stuff are also very useful. And of course, coming back next week is mm-hmm. appreciated. Yep. Yeah. And uh, that's probably about it. I think so. Um, and All and the B stuff we probably used with Buck Bumble already. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Tuck and roll your dongs, little BBs. <laughs> Thank you.